Okay. Um, thank you very much. And first of all, uh, thank you for the opportunity to yet again present uh, at the Monson User Groups. It's always a pleasure. Um, also, I want to thank everybody participating here to actually taking some time out and uh, and get some new information from somebody like me. And uh, I need to remember to congratulate Monson also on the 50th anniversary. Well done. Um, so I'll jump into it. Um, today I'll be presenting uh, or giving you a sneak preview of a feature that we are on schedule to release by the end of March. So this is actually not completely finalized yet, but uh, we're in the final stages, so to speak. It is what we call a data logging feature, which um, will enable you basically to do not an as built, but an as painted uh, report, for example, of a job that you've done with the robot. You can also document where the robot has been driving autonomously, and you will also be able to actually um, survey points with the robot. Um, and I think, uh, can we have the next slide, please? <laughs> I'm pretty sure there were more than one slide. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. So first of all, uh, how will logging be handled on the robots? Well, basically, the data log will be created in, in real time on the robot, and it will be stored uh, in the internal memory of the robot, meaning it does. it's not being sent to a cloud somewhere. Uh, so the data log will be, you could say, your data. You can then access uh, your log files on the robot with the tablet that uh, you have communicating with the robot, where you can then, you could say, format or choose the data you want exported from a given um, file and export it to either the tablet via Bluetooth, or you can transfer it directly to a, U a USB stick that you insert into the robot. The format that you will be getting the file in is in a CSV format. Uh, next slide, please, Mike, or whoever. So what will be logged? Well, uh, first of all, the position data, meaning tool coordinates and antenna coordinates. Uh, I'll get, I have a future slide in the presentation where I will show you what the difference is between those two, because that's quite important. You will get both the raw data and, but also pro projected as well as the actual plant uh, coordinates. So you will have your project uploaded or your um, into the uh, tablet. And then when you, the robot executes it, you will then get what was the planned coordinate of the point or the line and what was the actual uh, line painted. In order to be able to quality assure this, you will also get the accuracy data, meaning you could say uh, horizontal and vertical accuracy, as I'm sure you're used to uh, without being out surveying. And you will get those from the GST string basically directly out of the, for example, the GNSS receiver that is on the robot. There will be the possibility of surveying points, which would be a calculated average uh, of, of, of all the measurements taken at a certain point. And you will also get all the, what the robot settings were while logging, meaning uh, what was the input source, what was the tool position, was it side shifted, what was the tool height, line length uh, of the design, etc. cetera. Um, next slide, please. It did change. And I, I'm still seeing the same here. That's probably just updating slow here then. That's good. <laughs> you're in Antarctica. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm, it's cold here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I assume you are watching a slide that says um, log data and there's a picture of the UI. Is that correct? When and why will it be logged? Uh, so okay. About yeah. Okay. One. So there will be three options basically of logging. You can activate either one or two or all three at the same time. But basically, you can log what we call log spray, which is whenever the spray tool is activated, it's logging. So whenever the robot is painting, it will be logging. And this you could use to, to basically build a report on what have what have we done. You can also log driving. So whenever the robot drives autonomously, not important to note here, not when you're driving it manually, but only when it's in autonomous mode, it will then log where the robot has been and you can then track where it has been. And finally, you can survey points. So if you are setting out points, you can ask the robot to wait a set number of seconds at each point, and then you will get the, um, the average of all the measurements taken to for higher accuracy, basically, on surveying a point. Um, yes, did you switch the, to the next slide already? Yes, I just changed to the log data UI. Within yes, the UI. okay. So once the feature will be released, you will get a new um, tab in the settings menu called log data, and it will look most likely like this. There might still be a one or two minor changes, but this is the UI as it looks right now. And this is where you basically activate the different options. But if we go to the next slide, we can get a little bit into the detail of that. Yes, now it's, up. <laughs> it's fine now, refreshing. Um, so you can you can name the file uh, yourself or you can leave that out. If you give it a name like, for example, the project that you are doing with the robot, the date and time of the log file will always be added to the name. So if you don't name anything, you will get a log file with the date and uh, time that then will be the name of the log file. In uh, what is box number two there, uh, you have the three uh, logging options, which you can activate. As I said, you can activate one or two or all three. If there are no points in your design file, obviously no points will be surveyed. Box three is where you then uh, define the resolution, you could say, of how frequent you want data locked when, when logging. And box four is whether you want it to be by distance or by time intervals. Uh, that especially is relevant of the two first options. So instead of, let's say, every two inches, you could say every second or every two seconds or whenever you want. When it's logging spray, it will, uh, it will lock start and stop of spray. Also, if you are dashing a line. But if the line you are dashing is longer than the for example, the interval that you have uh, defined at log lines, um, then it will also lock points during that um, period when the spray tool is active. The bottom two buttons is to, the number five is to basically access the log files that are stored on the robot, choose a file and then export it. Um, or it is to look at any log files that you have actually saved on the tablet. Uh, once you start having uh, having that, if we go to the next slide, that we will see what uh, it looks like when you start uh, the transfer file feature. You'll be taken to uh, this uh, menu, where the top uh, drop down you will search for the file, the log file that you want to to export from. And then you will have the option of a few presets, or you can just choose custom. If you go next slide, I'll explain a bit more. If you choose custom, you can you get a drop down, which is the box one. And then all the data uh, that has been locked uh, is basically available. So you can say, I want the height, I want the um, Easting, I want the northing, I want whatever you really want, and it will start building a list to the right. Once you are happy with that, you can then hit transfer. Important to note that it doesn't matter what you take here, it will still maintain the full log file 
on the robot. So this is just you deciding what you want to extract, you could say, and export to either the tablet or to a USB stick. So you can always come back and decide, no, I forgot something and I want to add that too, and then you can just do a new export, as long as you haven't deleted the file on the robot. Next slide, please. This could be uh, what a CSV file could look like. It's just an example. Um, pretty sure most of you are familiar with the CSV files. But then there you see uh, locking of the driving distance, locking of the line start, locking of the, the lines end, and so on. Um, yeah, so tool and antenna are, the, are two uh, different measurements. So what is the value or where is it measured bit more precisely? So we see uh, uh, on a flat, you could say horizontal surface here, the two different robot models we have. So the tool measurement is the actual point on the ground, but the antenna measurement is where the antenna is. As you see on the on the right, you could see that the um, that the antenna is actually slightly offset compared to um, to the tool uh, on that robot. So that's an important difference. So depending on where you want uh, to know the data, this is uh, important. If you go one more slide. We'll see what it looks like on a tilted uh, surface. And, and here it becomes more, I would say even more clear why there's a, can be quite a big difference between the two uh, coordinates. Hopefully this sort of helps you understand where, where we are logging data or measuring as well. Uh, next slide, please. Once the feature is, is on your system, then we will introduce a new uh, status bar as well on the home screen of the app. Um, and it basically has uh, three states, you could say, disabled, enabled, or logging. So default, it will probably be disabled because you haven't made any choice to log anything. And then you will see a red status bar saying that logging is disabled. Once you have gone in and, and made some decisions on, on, on logging, it will then show enabled as long as it's just in manual mode. And once you then start working with the robot, meaning the robot goes into autonomous mode, it will then go green and it will tell you that it's logging. Um, if we just go one more slide, because I have just a picture of a slightly bigger uh, screen dump here, where you can maybe better see uh, the details. So it says data logging disabled, and it also tells you a little bit about the disk usage. So you will get a warning if you start, if the disk space on the robot starts, uh, you could say, filling up. Right now, uh, we are, the plan is that you will have space enough to log 11 consecutive days of eight hours at full resolution with everything activated regarding logging um, without having, you could say, filled up the store. Then the, the storage is filled up, but that's also almost 90 hours of uh, logging everything that it actually does should probably be enough for for most of you at least. Uh, and then I think we have a slide more. And that's the thank you from me. <laughs> Any questions, then of course I'm here. Uh, otherwise, Mike is an uh, absolute expert also on this. Um, but otherwise, I will just thank you all for your attention. And uh, and also this opportunity again to present to you. Thank you. Thanks, Per. Thank yeah. you, Per. I appreciate that. Mike, did you have some news you want to show? I have some more. Yeah, just to kind of recap that. I know we got some current time surveyor, you know, users in the audience. So hopefully that opens up not only like data collection possibilities, uh, but also like some as stake reporting options to show what was actually painted uh, and to a degree that's never been available before for QA type tasks. So yeah, hopefully there'll kind of be a twofold feature update for everyone. Thanks again, Pierre. And yeah, now what I'm going to do is just show a few customer case studies, uh, we're calling them. Uh, we'll start out close to home here. So these are all 
submitted by end users. Um, uh oh. Oh, it's a HEIC. All right, so we're not starting close to home. This is uh, me trying to show everyone the versatility of the layouts people are actively doing uh, with these tiny survey robots. So we've got some concrete footing uh, layout occurring here. Uh, robots being guided with the total station. Uh, this video is from somewhere in Pennsylvania. I don't know more precisely than that. Sorry. Yeah. We have it's, test alarm, but they can't see the video. It's up there. I always go off that side. So. Thank you, Nat, where you're in the you screen if you share. <laughs> Share. Yeah. Our share. Screen. screen. So now it should be. Yeah, screen. there it is. So I don't need to restart. It's a long video, long enough. So again, concrete footing. Uh, somewhere in Pennsylvania. So 360 degree prism on top of that, everybody understands that it's being guided by a robotic instrument. Uh, Mike, where's the data collector here in this particular? I assume in the user's hand. Uh, so this, uh, in this case, they are transferring the data via Bluetooth adapter. So a lot of times you might cable your data collector to get the coordinate from the total station into the tiny surveyor. You might actually use a serial port on the back of it. You can also get uh, Bluetooth serial adapters and send it directly to the robot wirelessly, uh, either from the instrument itself or from the data collector, you know, having one adapter on each side. Uh, so some of those adapters are pretty good. They, they can be a little pricey for the long range ones, but typically uh, you'll be able to not go with Bluetooth adapter and just uh, hard cable your or cable your uh, data collector to your tiny server robot. I think that's a pretty huge improvement to be able to get Bluetooth between the collector and the robot so you're so you don't have to have the collector riding around on top of it with the cable connecting it. You can actually be separated it's from so the weird. machine. So this is actually another concrete footing layout. Here you see the data collector cable. Uh, so you can see some of the advantages Troy was talking about. So it's just a more cluttered setup in this respect, but you don't have to spend a thousand dollars on Bluetooth adapters. So again, total station guidance, 360 prism. This is a Trimble setup. The last one was top couple. That's full disclosure, tiny surveyor is Pretty brand agnostic when it comes to survey equipment. Mostly comes down to NMEA output capabilities or GDM user defined capabilities in the case of a total station. That's really been a progression. I feel like getting the TMR into the market is how really Mike, with the help of TMR, <laughs> has had to figure out how to make this robot work with about every other manufacturer sensor-wise out there and uh, and has come a long ways with making different systems work. You see all these guys kicking rocks, you know, so just remember that could be you eating a sandwich in the shade while this robot does the layout for you, just throwing it out there. <laughs> see if any more right here we go so here uh different application different environment on a runway at the greenbrier airport in west virginia so some of you might have traveled around and done surveying in different parts of the country and if you do you'll find that some parts of the country are just harder to work in than others for whatever reason and i would say if something can work in west virginia it could probably work anywhere <laughs> just a stereotype just statement. <laughs> Sorry to any mountaineers out there, but you know, it's just, uh, you know. 
it's a nice mix of the South and Appalachia, so it's pretty unique. In this particular case, Mike, it looks like you're doing layout in an airport. Did you say that? Yep, yep. So this is while the taxiway runway is actively being paved, they've got this out there. So they're laying out, you know, mostly asphalt joints in this situation, paving joints. Uh, you can also then come back, you know, once the surface is installed and do striping layout. Uh, so kind of dual both. And then also, I really like this video because this customer has this thing absolutely decked out in aftermarket lights. Uh, so you can really see what's possible there. So I believe he's got like a six volt battery on there somewhere powering at least that antenna uh, whip flag there. So yeah, road flares uh, stuck on everywhere. So yeah, I love to see some of the mods that the customers add as well. So we, we supply some lighting similar to this uh, to help you get started, but this is above and beyond what I facilitate uh, through mods and for sure. So props to them. And then let's see, we got one more different application. Hopefully it works. Okay, so back to Total Station. In this case, we're laying out rooftop solar panels. So it's completely different than the previous two applications you've seen. Uh, in this case, the hardest part was just getting the robot on the roof. Uh, so that, you know, that's something to think about what your roof access looks at, like if it's just a million flights of stairs. Uh, but yeah, so different applications, all the same robot. Obviously, the guidance uh, that you use is going to be dictated by the application, whether you're using full station or GPS. So it's going to be convenient and most accurate, to, you know, based on those things. Yeah. Yeah, amazing. Any questions that come through there, Anne? No. Okay, Mike, did you have anything else on the TMR? No, that's really it. Um, yeah. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, here, if you're still on there, thank you so much for presenting. Uh, let's go ahead and do a couple more giveaways. Uh, this is from the last question and answer session that we had in poll. Um, first of all, we have a $50 gift card, $50 for 50 years. Yeah, $1 a year <laughs> over 50 years. So pretty good. Can't beat that. Right? Um, Tan and Matthews. So uh, Tan is here. I don't look, doesn't look like he is. So Tan, if you're online, just make sure you email. I'll email him. Oh, Emily will email you. You don't have to do anything. She'll reach out to you and be like, how do you want your money? <laughs> All right. And then the second giveaway is a Trimble gift bag, which is kind of like a surprise gift bag full of Trimble swag. Okay. And the winner of that.